Om Shanti and welcome back to Light of Knowledge with Sudha Didi. In our previous episode, we talked about the law of karma, the myth and the truth. And we will continue this discussion today with some specific examples. Didi, welcome back to Light of Knowledge. Thank you. Um, Didi, we had um, a very interesting conversation in our previous episode and uh, you know, your simple explanation put a lot of clarity on a lot of issues. Um, one such example that comes to my mind where we need a little more clarification. Mm -hmm. When we talk about karmic account and the law of karma, one more question comes to mind. Mm -hmm. um, in Asian countries especially, you know, there are a lot of panhandlers and wherever you go, you see them around. Um, in terms of the social, spiritual implications and um, people often wonder what's the right thing to do. I mean, should we or should we not give alms, you know, to these uh, panhandlers? Mm. And in terms of the karmic law and spiritual law, I was wondering what would be the right thing to do? And I would like to say two things. One is that some people not having the proper understanding of the law of karma, they say when they see these beggars and all that, so this is their karma, so let them suffer. Ah, yeah. They think like this. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, probably most of the people, fortunately, yes. they have that feeling of mercy and, you know, sympathy for these people. And being a human being, you know, naturally you will have that kindness in your heart. Yes. And you'd like to help these people. Yes. But the spiritual wisdom says here that it is better if you do not give them money. Mm -hmm. If a person is hungry, feed him. If a person is thirsty, give him water. He needs medicine or clothes if he's cold. So provide that if it is possible for you. But better not to give money. Um, is there any reason for that? Because money is automatic because you have some money in your wallet. Yeah. You may not necessarily carry any food or water with you. Yeah. So people just have that instinct to just give out money. Yeah, that is very true. Mm -hmm. But the thing is that nowadays particularly, there are many beggars who are not actually beggars, okay. but they are like uh, hired beggars. Okay. There are people who have business of this mm. and so they collect money through these beggars. Mm. And uh, the second thing is these beggars may have some not good habits, some harmful habits and they may use this money mm -hmm. for those wrong things. Oh, okay. And so as a result of that, so that action, that wrong action done by that person to some extent will leave its imprint on that one who has given the money to him. Oh, but you know? uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of deep because, um, you know, my reaction would be, uh, I'm trying to do something good. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to do, be helpful. Mm -hmm. So why is that negative action coming to me? Though the motive is good, you yeah. know, that the, when we talk of law of karma, there are two aspects, motive and method. Mo motive and method. Method. Okay. So motive has to be good and method too has to oh, be good. Okay. Okay. Sometimes the motive is right the method is not. Okay. Sometimes the method is okay, but the motive is not. You know, there are two things. So in this case, so I am talking about the method mm -hmm. or the motive is very good. Mm -hmm. So the person wants to help mm -hmm. the other person. Mm -hmm. But the method, seeing the situation in the present day world, so the repercussions may not be very, very good mm -hmm. as one could expect, expect or hope. Right, right. That right. is the thing. But, um, you know, the other side of the argument would be that uh, maybe there is some person out there who really needs the money. And um, if I like always think about um, what is he going to do with this money, all the negative yeah. effect is going to come back to me. Could it happen that some really deserving person is deprived of that opportunity of getting the money? So, you know, my experience says that when you have a very clear intellect, when you are free from all kinds of useless thoughts and so on, then you get sort of a touching, your intuition begins to work okay, there. Okay. And you are really able to help that person okay. and you can see in the eyes of that person, that person is really a needy person. Right. He's playing with you or he's a needy person. Right. 
if he's a needy person so and you can help that person maybe you can talk to that person to some extent if it is a possibility you have t time mm -hmm. available and so on that will be very good okay. and maybe you know I know that there are a number of such historical stories when some young children were helped mm -hmm. uh, in financially and then they grew up and they how they were thankful to that person who gave them that money right. and even wanted to make return of that money right right you know so that is the pure motive of that person who is wanting the money who right. is asking for the money right right yeah so it's very um, important to have that um, inner judgment right or that um, inner wisdom to mm -hmm. be able to differentiate between yeah. a true needy and yeah. uh, you know or the hired <laughs> or or the hired needy yeah. right, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah that's very interesting um, one other uh, scenario that came to my mind was um, you know a hit and run situation where say a person is driving by and happens to hit a car parked in mm -hmm. a parking lot mm -hmm. um, we'll look at both the scenarios uh, one scenario is where this person realizes that he has hit the car but does nothing about it and just drives off so what will be the repercussions in this scenario no this is this will be like dishonesty uh -huh. you know and dishonesty you know it will return to that person okay so better would have been if he has realized to stop by mm -hmm. and so maybe to you know wait for the person who has parked his car there mm -hmm. and talk to that person so it's just by chance or something and if there is a need to pay some amount if it is really you know damaged. hit and damaged and yeah. so on so and maybe that other person will say it's okay fine mm -hmm. so it could have happened by me also mm -hmm. so but the honesty you know returns back to you definitely or dishonesty too mm -hmm. So better would be to stay and talk to that person. Right, uh, but in the long term, if I did not do that, if I drove away, yeah, um, how will that come back to me? In what form will that come back to me? So maybe the my card will be hit by somebody. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. It can be this way. It can be much more even. Mm. It can be even much more. You know, it can be hit in such a way that it it is not under. It can't be repaired anymore. Okay. And sometimes it it happens that. Uh, you have not even done insurance mm -hmm. yeah. and then you do not get the money back right. of this right. so it can be many many repercussions you know okay. this is why they say that the law of karma or the philosophy of karma is very very deep right, right. very deep right. yeah um, in our previous episode you talked about um, you know when you say sorry uh, at least part of it is uh, excused yeah um, even in uh, this scenario I mean I was thinking that um, or I guess in any scenario, uh, you don't take responsibility for your action, but later on you realize that you mm -hmm. have done a mistake, and you just say sorry out there to the world or to the nature mm -hmm. or that person, uh, you mm -hmm. know. So this kind of um, feeling coming really from the bottom of your heart, not mm -hmm. just to say sorry, but the repentance, yeah. does that help in all situations to some extent? It does help. Okay. But you know, like for example, I long ago I heard a case when uh, the members of this organization, Pramakumaris, they began to go and serve in the jails. Mm -hmm. And this incident is from Delhi, mm -hmm. and uh, so there is a jail where there are hardcore criminals. criminals kept there and who have done big things, murders and this and that and so, so on. So once a group of uh, our sisters were there and um, they came to know that there were people living in that cell you know who had murdered somebody and they were kept there for lifelong imprisonment and so on mm -hmm. when they talked to these people so uh, one of them said that uh, I never never wanted to kill that person mm -hmm. you know but what happened is that that person came to my home and uh, he began to behave in such a way that I got very angry. I could not control my anger and so whatever came in my hand at that time, mm -hmm. I just lifted and hit, hit that him. person. I just wanted to hit that person mm -hmm. and not kill that mm -hmm. person. But it, it was a very heavy thing yeah. and it hit the head of that person okay. and he immediately collapsed. Wow. 
and so as a result of this now I am in jail mm -hmm. for the whole life wow. and I am really suffering for that I am repenting that I have my wife I have my children they are all alone without me there is nobody to earn the money but because the action has been done mm. I have to suffer mm -hmm. for that pun you know mm -hmm. for that action in this form of punishment right. so maybe the even the government has this law if the person behaves in a very well way okay. while in the jail his punishment is reduced okay. I very much hope that this person was released right. earlier right. not he was for lifelong there right. but because it was done though incidentally you know not consciously right. but the action was done yes so the result comes to that action right so to yeah. some extent he has to pay yeah, he has for to what pay. he has done yeah, yeah. The, but it is very sure that the punishment will be reduced, reduced yeah. yeah this uh, same scenario of um, <coughs> hitting the car mm -hmm. we'll take the other side of the story now where this person hits the car the owner is not there so she leaves um, a note on yeah. the windshield you mm -hmm. know under the wiper blade mm -hmm. with her phone number on it for example and um, I'm sorry I hit your car you know this is my phone number and then this develops in such a situation that um, it almost becomes like a harassment mm -hmm. you know she has left her phone number and this person keeps calling and maybe mm -hmm. is demanding more money mm -hmm. than what uh, the damages are for yeah and now she's feeling I did this out of goodness you know mm -hmm. I did not run away mm -hmm. I confronted the situation I left my yeah. phone number but th now this has turned out to be a very tricky situation right right it happens it happens you know but then uh, understanding the present day situation of the world the better would have been if you stop and wait for some time and then uh, talk to that person mm -hmm or the car will have to be taken to the insurance company mm -hmm. or the service uh, workshop and so to ask how much amount is right. to be paid right. in Russia I know that if such things happen then one needs to wait till the traffic police and the police will come mm -hmm. and see and analyze the situation sure. Sure. and after this analysis then you have to fill a form and you will have to pay if the the victim mm -hmm. will have the victim or that person maybe the parking was done in the wrong way Correct. maybe that could also be the reason so there could be many reasons right. so and but the only thing is that we should not take law in our own hands mm -hmm. better is to wait for that mm -hmm. because the people can really misuse make misuse of your politeness right. and your right. honesty also right. so you have to be uh, honest and tolerant but at the same time quite wise to deal with different situations, situations. Yeah. Uh, but karmically uh, what would have more impact uh, running away mm -hmm. or um, leaving your phone number or <laughs> it maybe could be confronting <laughs> it could be this way or that way in uh -huh. different situations you can't make a hard and fast okay. thing here you know okay. so like this or like that okay. in some cases the person left the phone number and that the person the owner now calls him he says okay it's no, no problem okay, at all okay. no, there could be karmic account in such a way okay. that he would harass okay. or he would say it doesn't matter at all okay yeah. so to me it almost sounds like um, we get pulled um, yeah. in one direction or the other yeah depending on what karmic account we have right right with right. that person in yes. that situation yes um, but um, is there a way to come out of this cycle I mean if we are going through some negative cycle right is there a way to come out of it in some way uh, break the cycle there is there is number one is consciously to do some positive actions mm -hmm. selflessly okay. for the service of others okay the more your positive account grows okay the negative account reduces okay. neutralizes okay. And the second thing is we need to change our inner tendencies in our language we call it sanskar uh -huh. you know when a person performs an action that action leaves an imprint on the soul mm -hmm. and when that action is repeated so this repeated action makes this imprint deeper okay. and this deeper imprint is called sanskar Sanskars, okay. and so we need to work for changing these sanskars mm -hmm. by doing good actions okay. so that this 
negative sanskar is totally erased okay. and as a result of that i will be liberated from performing something wrong okay and the third thing is that you know god is called purifier mm -hmm. when we remember god mm -hmm. we get that power from him which will burn our past sinful account the negative account mm -hmm. and so this power like if there is some rubbish and you put a matchstick and you that this will just burns sure. so it's the same mm -hmm. so this since you know they have accumulated in the soul like the heap of rubbish mm. and so when we remember god with love mm -hmm. that this fire of love for god burns these mm. rubbish of sins mm -hmm. and the soul is liberated from that mm. and then the experience is the lightness mm -hmm. you feel very light mm. and then you no more do anything wrong because your sanskars have transformed mm. you have now positive sanskars right. yeah that's how beautiful i mean um you know bring the light of god in your life yeah. and uh, burn all the negativity yeah. that's very beautiful mm -hmm. um that seems to be um you know the way you explained it to me that seems to be the only way i think yeah to break the cycle it sounds only like only way yeah. the only way to change the sanskar so that you do only positive actions now mm -hmm. and to burn the past okay by remembering god okay so this is a two step process yeah. you burn your previous uh, negative karma and yeah. create positive actions right right okay yeah. um many times like in um, you know in the olden days i remember people would uh, whether it was in school or your parents um it was very easy uh, for your teacher to like you know hit you with a <laughs> ruler <laughs> or even at home yeah. to discipline you and mm -hmm. um the teachers and the parents did that with good intentions you mm -hmm. know they wanted to discipline the child if they misbehaved or if they didn't do their homework or whatever uh but now that i'm listening to all of uh, this conversation with you this thought came to my mind even this is going to bring upon a negative karmic account i believe right this is this yeah. is you know but because hitting itself is uh, itself is wrong mm. itself is a wrong action Yes, we need to discipline the child and everything is okay, but no, that child is doing something wrong. And so hitting is not a right action itself. Mm -hmm. And it is said two wrongs do not make one right. They have to be such examples for the children, for the students so that uh, their words mm -hmm. are enough. Mm -hmm. They are they have enough strength okay to bring the child in discipline. Okay. and if it still does not happen then we should leave it that's all is that right i mean maybe maybe it is the karma of the child okay. that he does not want to learn okay cuz um you know many times um, it does happen in um, homes where uh, the parents are educated they're you know professionals yeah. but it turns out that their child is just not interested in education and um the parents will force them yeah and you know try to make them go to school no matter what but the child just doesn't want to do it so what do we do in this scenario yes you know that the parents should hear understand that the children you know their children they are souls mm -hmm. and they are unique mm -hmm. they should not think that because they are our children and so they should be like us mm -hmm. they can be like them in maybe some physical appearance or maybe in some other qualities mm -hmm. but not definitely in academics or education or like that mm -hmm. because they have their own sanskar mm -hmm. maybe that child was a very good musician sure. in his previous birth mm -hmm. maybe a very good artist maybe a good photographer mm -hmm. maybe you know something else you right, know right. so they have some other kind of creative abilities yes. and not these technical abilities mm -hmm. so there is a need to understand the child what the child really wants to do mm -hmm. if does not want to go for those that typical secular education mm -hmm. to become the same kind of a professional as the parents but maybe he wants to go for something else and in that he can become really a you know master mm -hmm. he can become very brilliant in that so there is a need to understand the child mm. but generally the problem comes is that the parents think that if our child will be similar to us in this is our prestige mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Otherwise, we lose our prestige. Right, right. And so they are trying to satisfy their feelings mm -hmm. by giving education to the child. Right. Though they have very good motive. Right. But at the same time, having the understanding of the soul, the mother's soul is mother's soul, father's soul is father's soul, child's soul is that soul. Mm -hmm. And each soul is unique. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And each soul has its own sanskars, right. its own abilities. Right. So if there is this effort to understand the child, mm -hmm. then you know there will be no problem. Then right. the child will be sent to that school mm -hmm. where he is really interested. interested. Um, what if the child just refuses to go to school mm -hmm. and um, I mean ultimately the, there will be a dilemma in the parent's mind you know yeah. you know have I done good by my child um, do you think that at certain point we should just say that okay like you just mentioned the child or the soul has come with his own sanskaras right so should we just let it be after a certain while like no matter how much you tell him or her it's just not happening and this is not necessarily uh, becoming a professional mm -hmm. you know they'll say at least complete your high school yeah at least get your uh, degree mm -hmm. but even if that is not happening then do you just let it go of course mm. of course there is no other way okay you know I have seen such examples you know when you just let go okay uh, after some time the realization comes I have seen such children who did not want to go to school when they were little mm -hmm. and they were forcibly taken to school and so on and so on mm -hmm. but after some time when the realization came to these children they became professors okay. you know they became professors and mm -hmm. they there was no need for the parents to tell them to school to do the homework or to do this right. okay. or to go to the institute or to the university mm -hmm. and so on they become professors okay and so we need to let go because mm -hmm. having this understanding that any way the forcing pressurizing is not going to help is not going to help mm -hmm. it is not going to help mm -hmm. The other side of the coin, where in this uh, story, you know, he became a professional, but uh, sometimes um, it may happen that uh, they really um, don't achieve anything. One mother was sharing her experience that her elder son, mm -hmm. when he was 19 and he was not working, and his younger sister was going for work, mm -hmm. and you know, because her father became very sick and so on and so forth. But this elder son was not going mm -hmm. so and he was 19 at that time so his mother like putting a stone on her heart told him put his bag outside the home oh. and told look I'm not going to keep you in my home mm. do whatever you like mm. take care of yourself and so he went mm -hmm. he went to his friends and probably there something happened with him or his friend talked to him or maybe he realized he does not tell the whole story mm -hmm. but after that now this person you know he became a very highly educated professional oh, okay. and he earns a lot mm -hmm. and he's married mm -hmm. he has children mm -hmm. and he's living in Germany now and uh, he supports his parents and tells his mother if you would not have done that action at that time, mm -hmm. I would not have reached here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So sometimes the parents have to be strict with the children. Right, right. And otherwise they think that uh, this is our blame probably or mm -hmm. this is our karma mm -hmm. that this child is born to mm -hmm, us. Mm -hmm. Okay, it is karma, very true. But at the same time their karma is to make the child stand mm -hmm. on his own feet mm -hmm. so that he is a useful member of the society. Right. This is their duty, this is their moral duty right. and so they have to be strict with the right. child. Not harsh, mm -hmm. not cruel, mm -hmm. but strict with strict. the child. Didi, you have given us um, a very powerful example which brings home the message of um, you know, knowing what to do in such situations where you have to use your inner judgment right. and um, you know, um, have the right motives mm -hmm. to do the right action. Right. Um, with these words, I would really like to thank you again for being with us and uh, 
for this wonderful, wonderful explanation that you have given us on the karmic law. And hopefully it has uh, shed some light on the questions that our viewers might have had. Mm -hmm. So um, thank you once again, and uh, we look forward to having you back with us. Thank you, thank you, Spati. Okay. We have had a really wonderful, elaborate discussion, uh, taking some specific situations on how the law of karma can affect us. Uh, but in all of this, I think the bottom line is to use your judgment uh, when you do your actions, whether it is giving alms to the poor or dealing with your kids or your spouse, use your judgment and give it a thought. I mean, how is this action going to affect me in the long run? So with these words, we conclude this episode. And as always, we thank you for watching us. And until next time, take care and Om Shanti. Thank <laughs> you.